So much has already been written on World War II. Is there anything more we can learn from what is already out there? Of course there is, and Liberty is just the place. So grab yourself a snack and a chair, because we're going to take some time and explore, in depth, the history of World War II and some of the subtle nuances that are out there still today. We hope to gather some facts, bust some myths, and put to rest once and for all some overused stereotypes. Officially, World War II was fought between 1939 through 1945, but of course, as we know with war, there are plenty of unofficial years in there too. The best way to start a whole series on World War II is to find out who the major players were in this well-known event. Let's start with the good guys. The big players were Great Britain, France, with a brief pause from 1940 to 1944 because of Germany's invasion, the Soviet Union, and the U.S. But really, if we are to be fair, we must include all of the members of the United Nations, many smaller countries such as Australia, Costa Rica, and South Africa, because their soldiers fought just as hard, long, and deadly as the bigger countries. It's important to know what exactly the goal of the Allies was. Some may believe it was to defeat Hitler and his minions, but really, Many historians agree that it was actually to bring world peace. However, each big player had different ideas of exactly what that would look like. Lots of nuances there, but the main goal was to defeat Germany and bring a world order that would deny access to just one person, gaining total world domination. Will the modern Allied forces be needed again, given the current state of the world right now with Putin? We'll find out, I guess. But for now, we should be content to know that these countries did what they had to do to stop the dictators of their time. Hopefully, the comfort is that, if needed again, they'll be there. Now, we come to the bad guys, or as historians call them, the Axis powers, the meanies of World War II. These include Germany, Italy, and Japan. These collectively delusional powers wanted to bring a new kind of peace definition, a new world order, they loosely called it. They claimed to want to promote and support their own citizens' land grab, mutually inclusive economic growth, and collective prosperity. However, what they failed to share, along with their global plans, was that they would do this through the most horrific means of force, domination, and criminal activities. They just didn't want to play fair, and they deceived many in their own society to believe that these goals were all above board. But of course, we have come to know now the truth was anything but. Because of the shaky and uncertain times World War II introduced, the Axis power forces just needed to be patient about 20 years before they made their move. It started around 1939 with Hitler's invasion into Poland. Of course, Adolf Hitler needs no introduction or historical context. His name, unfortunately, is synonyms with death destruction, and devastation, not to mention the cruelest of genocide. However, there are a few myths we'd like to put to rest here. 1. That Hitler was German. He was not. He was actually born in the Braunau am Inn in Austria, near Linz. 2. That Hitler was part Jewish. Although there are many stories and studies about Hitler's heritage, the fact is we just don't know. While some legitimate studies support his paternal grandfather was Jewish, other legitimate historians rather say inconclusive for a more accurate and precise view that we just don't know for sure. Citing a study from Holocaust Learning, UK, a study from last year, and on the Jewish Virtual Library website, they give a well-studied family tree and have drawn the conclusion that he was, in fact, not Jewish. What does everyone here think? Three. Hitler was an elected official. He was not. He was appointed by the acting president of the time, Paul von Hindenburg. It sounds like a made-up Hollywood actor's name, but he was, in fact, the reigning leader at that time. Through a series of power grabs, unkept promises, and party favorites, Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in 1933. It would be good to mention, in passing, a few facts about the rest of the major Axis clan. Coming in for Italy was Benito Mussolini, who was the fascist dictator from 1925 to 1945, and then Emperor Hirohito 
Japan's longest serving monarch. Playing for the other team, the Allied forces, the good guys, the people on the right side of history were these gents. One, Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Churchill is most noted for champion, energetic, and enthusiastic goals for all of the UK, including provocative quotes, heartening speeches, and a prolific writer. Although Churchill is most noted for his time during war, he also was a strong leader and statesman, including much of Great Britain's economic reform at the time, a forward-thinking and progressive leader. 2. Charles de Gaulle, French's World War II leader, leading France's resistance against Hitler. Among his own countrymen, he is best known for writing the Constitution directly after the war, and he received Poland's highest Medal of Honor award. 3. Chief Commander of the USSR at the time was Joseph Stalin. Stalin is a very interesting figure in history. Joining forces with the Allies during this time of world unrest, he is known to be a national hero. However, of course, we know him also as a cruel, absolutist, stone-cold murderer, and relentless military strategist, even at the expense of millions of his soldiers dying. Not a step backwards was his favorite proclamation to embolden his troops. 4. And of course, the United States. If you were born in the U.S. or grew up with some form of U.S. history, then this is very well known. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, alongside his equally, if not more famous wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, served as the 32nd president during World War II. Other than leading the armed forces in World War II, he is best known for his tireless work preserving the nation's national parks and forests. These are the big hitters for World War II. In our next series on liberty, we'll start diving into the ins and outs, ups and downs of what some historians call the greatest conflict of our time that touches almost every corner of the world in one way or another. Like, comment, and subscribe for more updates, and thank you for joining us on our walk through history.